hackers affiliated with China's People's Liberation Army have infiltrated critical services here in the U.S. Watch out. China's cyber army is on the attack. China's cyber army is invading critical U.S. services, cause societal chaos inside the United States to affect our decision making around a crisis. Attack ports, attack water supply, attack energy. Welcome back. Back with another banger. It's the React Files, where we react to the creepiest, craziest, scariest TikToks. You should watch them all. Hope you're having a good night. And if you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, Ring that notification bell just to make sure the algorithm know what's up. So what are we gonna do, y'all? That's right. Run these numbers up. Let's get straight to it. Ace. China affiliated hackers hit critical US infrastructure, computer systems for water, power, communications, and transportation bodies. They have been affected this just coming out today. Now this comes as yesterday. I share with you the breaking news live as soon as it came out. China's cyber army is invading critical US services. A utility in Hawaii, a West Coast port, and a pipeline are among the victims in the past year, but this all intensifying and coming out just yesterday that this is going to be increasing because take a look at this coming out today, the big one preparing for a long war with China January and February 2024 they're saying that 2024 looks like it is going to be the year of war the United States China Israel Hamas Ukraine Russia things are intensifying and I'm gonna be sharing with you the latest so you know exactly what's going on so we're gonna be taking a look at video footage and articles that have come out in the past 24 hours but before we do do me a quick favor I know this is not the news that anybody wants to hear that we could be looking at a potential war that there could be cyber attacks and there's at least 24 different known infrastructure systems that are under threats by China at this time. However, if you appreciate the information and you believe like I do that knowledge is power and us knowing what is going on is very important to prepare ourselves and our families, do me a quick favor, smash that like button, just takes a second. To stay up to date, it's totally free. Why not hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and please share this out with others if you think it will help. The ending of the movie Leave the World Behind is a metaphor. It sucked. There was no resolution. There was really no plot. There was really nothing. But it was a metaphor. So throughout the movie, this little girl and she is just obsessed with the episode of Friends. Her biggest complaint throughout the entire movie was that they couldn't access the internet so she couldn't finish her series. More on this shit in a minute, by the way. Anyway, towards the end of the movie, she gets lost in the woods and they, she makes her way towards a billionaire's mansion who has a bunker in their basement. Just so happens to have a very vast collection of old DVDs. Bruce Almighty is in there, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She happens to find the Friends series and she finds the series and the episode that she's looking for. She grabs it excitedly, she goes and sits in front of the TV while the world around her is falling apart and hits play. Which is a metaphor for what the rest of the sleepers are doing. They go in their comfort zone with their comfort shows and even though the world is running around them, they are happy. They are consuming. It was a metaphor mocking the pores. Back to this. So Julia Roberts is the star of this movie. Matthew Perry, who was one of the stars of Friends, died on Julia Roberts' birthday, and they used to date back in 1996 for about three months. But that's not all. During the movie, there were a lot of connections to racism, comments that were made and attitudes that were adjusted to portray uh, racism. During the beginning of the movie, when everything starts to kind of go, there was a ship that had run aground, and that ship was called the White Lion. <laughs> And the White Lion was an English privateer operating under Dutch letter of marquee, which brought the first Africans to the English colony of Virginia in 1619, a year before the arrival of the Mayflower and New England. Even though they were sold as indentured servants, the event is regarded as the start of African slavery in the colonial history of the United States. Just fucking wild. I didn't know it had a piece of history attached to it. I guess they knew what they were doing when they produced the movie. So yeah, deep, real deep. Manifesting is easy when you understand how reality works. Physical world that you experience is the world of effect. Everything is already manifested here. The mind is the root cause of all things. You have a conscious and a subconscious mind. The conscious mind is everything that you are aware of, your thoughts, your visual field and your emotions in this present moment. The subconscious mind is what manifests everything without you even knowing. 
It is the mind that is telling your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe and your digestive system to work. Without you consciously knowing, the subconscious mind stores everything that you've ever experienced, all of your memories, traumas and all of the things that you've ever gone through. The subconscious mind holds all of your mental programs, your language, tying your laces, brushing your teeth. This is all programs that we have programmed into our mind. What you think, feel and consciously do on a daily basis impresses the subconscious mind, male and female. Every single thought has an emotion directly attached to it. Thoughts are in the brain, emotions are in the heart. Every conscious thought you have has an emotion that is impressing the subconscious mind and creating a program. Basically, every single thought that you think, you're telling your subconscious that, that is what you want to manifest. Because everything that's in the subconscious mind has to manifest. Therefore, if you trick your subconscious mind by using your electric thoughts and magnetic emotions to think and feel about the reality that you want on a repetitive basis, you will trick your subconscious mind and create a program. This program that you created within the subconscious mind will manifest into 90% of your daily basis behavior. Because 90% of your daily basis behavior is ran by the programs that are in the subconscious mind. When you wake up, your brain is producing theta waves. This specific brainwave frequency is associated with rapid programming and hypnosis. If you think and feel and listen to affirmations every single morning when you're in these waves, you will reprogram the mind rapidly. Thoughts are electric, your emotions are magnetic. This is what you call your vibe. When you meet someone, you can feel their vibration based off their thought and emotional state. You should never entertain a negative thought, a negative word, a negative emotion, because all of this is speaking to every single cell in your body and to the people around you. The link is in the bio for the Book of Wisdom. Folks, pay close attention. You're going to want to go look this up. And I give the full details completely documented in the second edition of the Antichrist and Cup of Tea. Here it is, July 28th at the Commonwealth Games, the 22nd Commonwealth Games for 2022. You have these every few years. They've been going on the whole time. The Queen Elizabeth II was queen. It's the largest set of international games in the world after the Olympics. And this year they had uh, 72 nations and territories participating. Roughly, they estimate almost a third of the world's population potentially watching, okay? The whole British Commonwealth. Uh, at this event, Prince Charles opened it in lieu of the Queen on her behalf. He oversaw the whole thing. He was there in person at the Alexander Stadium in Birmingham, Birmingham, England. Okay. At that event, a giant Molech bull, 10 meters in height, was rolled out into the center of the stadium to be worshipped and to face a large recreated, rebuilt, right there in front of everybody, mock Tower of Babel, with shards in it, and it begins with a star exploding in our solar system. That's how they introduced this. A lot of CGI initially. They portray a star outside our solar system, or maybe deep in our solar system, blowing up past Saturn. And it explodes a bright star like Lucifer. That's what it is, exploding. And its shards fly through our solar system, and they reach Earth. And they land in all the nations of the Commonwealth. And these 72 quote-unquote dreamers, New Agers, find these shards outside their homes. They retrieve them. The first person to do so is named Stella. She picks it up. It's lit. It's brightly lit. It's like a large quartz crystal. It's bright white, lit as bright white, like, a, like a, an interior light, as it were bright white. She picks this thing up and she prays to it, whispers to it and prays to it. Then she takes this back to her home. All these others, these 72 dreamers, there's 72 of them total, including her, pick their shards up and they take them to their homes. As soon as they do, there are anti-gravity effects in their homes. Things start to float in the air. And then their homes are lifted up off the ground with these people in them. And they float across the Commonwealth from other nations and across the UK, across seas and oceans and lakes and forests and so forth to Birmingham, England to be over the stadium. All these homes floating over the stadium and then they land and the dreamers exit them in front of the audience. 
and they have the shards in hand. The bull then comes onto the stadium, pulled by slave women, slavish women on chains. The bull, they portray this, rebels and detaches from the chains. And these female slaves who've been driven like by somebody who's kind of like a Roman, you know, a demon, whatever, because he didn't quite look like a Roman, are freed, right? So now the bull and these women are freed and they pretend they're afraid of each other. And the bull goes on to the center of the stadium and these quote unquote dreamers, these new agers encircle the thing. But initially before they do that, Stella comes with her crystal. She and five others, there are six of them, six of the dreamers, apart from these slavish women who are behind now on the bull to other si either side of it as it's moving, kind of charging actually into the center of the stadium. Okay, from the, from the ex from the track from just outside where it's entered, you know, now detached from its chain, no longer restrained. Okay, charges into the center of the stadium. Stella wanting to appease this thing so that they're not killed by this Moloch idol. Goes with this New Age crystal, approaches it slowly with these five other dreamers. She's got the crystal in her left hand, and then she puts her hand up to the nose of the bowl, and it bows down so that she can touch its nose with a crystal in her hand. She's the only one holding her crystal at that point. And the bull is, at least at that moment, appeased. And there's a whole backstory to this, and they say things, they announce things to the audience, you know, about peace, love, friendship, yada, yada, you know, conflict resolves, slaves freed, all this kind of stuff. And as this is happening, the... Uh, the slavish, and there are multiple stages to this, so I'm going to be skipping over some things, but this bull kind of calms down. It's facing the Tower of Babel this whole time. And at times there are flames like the towers, like the flames of hell all over this Tower of Babel, okay? You know, and it's facing this thing, the bull is. They encircle it multiple times, and they literally worship it. They've all got their crystals in hand. They bow down to this thing. And then later, Stella gets atop it and rides it as the woman riding the beast. And there are then 71 dreamers encircling it. And they're bowing down to this thing, worshiping it, and literally doing a New Age worship ceremony with their crystals before this thing and inviting the whole commonwealth to join them in this worship. And who's overseeing all of this? Prince Charles. And then the woman's riding the beast, right? And as we get toward the end of the ceremony, and there are a bunch of songs, by the way, that are accommodating this with, with significant lyrics, okay? And I won't go into that, but it's all documented in the book. At the end, okay, as it's getting book, dark... Which book, which book is this this, will be in the, this is going to be in the second edition of the Antichrist of Cup of Tea. One reason it's a little bit delayed is I have to get this in there. It's too critical. Okay? Right there at the end, the bull is rearing back. So it's rising up on its front feet. Okay? And it's encircled by the flags of all these nations, the 72... They've literally placed their flags at the base of this thing. So not just worshiping it with their crystals and all the rest, and not just being ridden by Stella, you know, the woman riding the beast. Now the tower is rising again before this beast. It's been built. And all the nations, by the way, their names have gone across this tower already, at this point been displayed on its surface. At the top of this tower, I told you those shards came down earlier from the heavens, this blown up Luciferian star representing the devil, reaching the earth, falling to the earth. The devil falling to the earth, okay? And being taken up by these new agers. So they all approach, they, they leave the bull now, but the flags are at the base of the bull, showing the nations are all worshiping around this bull in 71. And I'm going to come back to the number 71. It's extremely significant. But at any rate, they all come to the base of this tower with their shards in hand, and they stick them into the side of the tower, and they ascend visibly through the tower. And as they get toward the top of the tower, they form this ball, the original star that blew up, reconstituted, and then it rises above the tower, and you get this huge disco-like ball atop the tower that's lit up very brightly, and a beam of light goes between that ball and the chest of the ball. Now, it's nighttime at this point in Alexander Stadium, an open-air stadium, so you can see these lights, but they're portraying the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel in our day with Lucifer, being wow. over it, being worshipped by all the nations of the world. And why do I say all? I said that the 72 dreamers were for the 72. They're for the 72 nations and territories of the British Commonwealth, right? Stella being the 72nd, she's riding the bull. Why 71 worshipping around the bull? 
Okay, how does that represent all the nations? Well, here's the deal. At the, ta- at the Feast of Tabernacles every year, Israel would sacrifice 70 bulls. Not 71, 70. And Israel's rabbis historically understood that to represent the nations that came out of the scattering from the Tower of Babel. So they took those 70 to represent the nations of the world. And the way Christians and often the rabbinic community have interpreted those 70 bulls that were sacrificed, they would say, well, we have our God and we worship him and we do sacrifices on behalf of Israel. This is how it would be interpreted, right? So these 70 are for the nations. And oftentimes Christians look at that and they think this is a sacrifice on behalf of the nations. So maybe their sins would be forgiven. The ones who don't worship the God of Israel at the Feast of Tabernacles each year, it was never that. That is not what it ever in history represented. So I'm going to come back to what it did represent in a moment. It did represent the 70 nations. That's correct. But the reason there were 71 around the base of this bowl is because Israel was included. You see, the nation of Israel came after the 70 at the Tower of Babel, right? Interesting. So now they're saying, oh, Israel, by the way, you're not going to worship your God anymore. You're going to worship Lucifer with us. Mm. So there's 71 instead of 70 at the base of this bowl led by the woman riding the beast, representing, if you want, the harlot church under the Antichrist, okay? Well, what were the sacrifices really about at Tabernacles, the 70 bulls? Was it for the sins of the nations? I'm going to tell you no. It was their death and destruction, their crushing by the Messiah at Armageddon. That's what it really represented. When God, our God, sacrifices the nations like brute beasts, man without understanding is like the beasts that perish. That is what scripture tells us multiple times. Those nations that did not worship God that were at the base of the Tower of Babel historically were not worshipers of the real God. They were engaging in paganism. Well, like he said in the beginning, make sure you do your research on that one. Maybe his interpretation is different than that on that day when it was performed. It's new to me. Let me know what you think. I walk with my husband Michael and hold hands. It's like a whole new world for me. Just walking and holding hands. Something that one of our fellow Americans for years could not do. What kind of shit is that? distinguished guests and men and women of the finest military in the world most of all Admiral Mullen Deborah Michael and I also want to acknowledge uh, your son Jack who's deployed today uh, all of you have performed extraordinary service to our country hell no as you said when Americans look around the Middle East today they see one reliable, stable, faithful ally of the United States, and that's the democracy of Israel. Americans know that Israel and the United States share common values, that we defend common interests, that we face common enemies. Iran's leaders know that too. You know, for them, you're the great Satan, we're the little Satan. For them, we are you and you are us. And you know something, Mr. President? At least on this last point, I think they're right. We are you, and you are us. We're together. So if there's one thing that stands out clearly in the Middle East today, it's that Israel and America stand together. (laughs) I walk with my husband, Michael, and hold hands. It's like a whole new world for me. Just walking and holding hands. Something that one of our fellow Americans for years could not do. What kind of shit is that? My distinguished guests and men and women of the finest military in the world. Most of all, Admiral Mullen, Deborah, Michael and I also want to acknowledge uh, your son Jack who's deployed today Uh, all of you have performed extraordinary service to our country hell no as you said when Americans look around the Middle East today 
they see one reliable, stable, faithful ally of the United States, and that's the democracy of Israel. Americans know that Israel and the United States share common values, that we defend common interests, that we face common enemies. Iran's leaders know that too. You know, for them, you're the great Satan, we're the little Satan. For them, we are you, and you are us. And you know something, Mr. President? At least on this last point, I think they're right. We are you, and you are us. We're together. So if there's one thing that stands out clearly in the Middle East today, is that Israel and America stand together. How could this car? Okay, the building is perfectly fine. We got a concrete parking lot, right? I mean, even the trees are still good. And yet we got this guy. I mean, this car has melted, bro. This thing got absolutely melted. I mean, there's nothing. Someone probably threw that water bottle in there, but look at this thing, man. Now talk to me, people, somebody. Not a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist, but somebody that understands something about fires. Tell me, in the midst of this fire, is there an ember that's big enough that could float over here, incinerate this car, melt it, and nothing else around it? I don't think it was moved here, right? I don't think it was moved here. That's just tripping me out. How'd it catch fire? What happened? I don't even see flame marks back there. I see, I see marks here, brown, black. You can see it happened here, right? But, but how? And why is this building fine? And how does it catch fire surrounded by... It's the same thing I've been showing you before. I just don't get any answers from anybody that make any sense. Other than everyone trying to throw me under the bus. Curious again, how did this little lot here catch fire? Trilogy is right next door. It appears to be in good shape. The, uh... The sticker or the placard says, you know, structure is okay. But then you got this situation next door where everything is just melted. Again, maybe there was some kind of, you know, I don't know. Why is all this on fire? Or why did it all, there's not even a structure here. But again, I don't know. Just adds, just piles of ashes of stuff that was clearly made out of some kind of tin foil or metal or something. I don't know, the metal really took a hammering on this fire. If you were metal, I mean wood, you're kind of good, right? Wood, yeah, you're, you're not too bad. You're metal, you're done. Drywall, drywall is good. This structure here has got wood on it, propane tanks next to it. It looks perfectly fine. But this stuff next door, whatever it was, gone. This, gone. So maybe someone can find an old, you know, an old Google Earth photo, because you can still see the scorch marks on the building. Okay, so how'd this thing catch fire? Scorch marks, right? It was definitely burning right here. Just a random car fire, random truck fire. I don't know, man. I don't know, you tell me, last time I showed this to the to the world, I got in so much trouble. You know, I'm a bad guy because I'm showing the world, like, melted stuff. Again, maybe I'm just an amateur. Maybe you're a fireman out there, a fire marshal or an arsonist specialist or some kind of government official that says, Hey, Eric, this is how it works. There's these large embers that just fly around and just randomly car bomb, you know? Okay, I'd probably believe you. <laughs> but that there's nothing else around here that could have caught it on fire. Here's the propane tank, it's still good. But look at this. Whoop! All right, so we know the fire didn't come from here. This is a big concrete ditch. Now this was on fire down below, you can see this is scorched. So the fire went along here, but not a lot of fuel. So what caused these buildings, these particular buildings to go up? I don't know the answer. Again, just curious, right? Interesting. What I find the most interesting about this is the fact that there's really nothing 
else around here that caught fire. Once again, across the street, Calvary Chapel, Island Grocers, this is Ali'i Linen Service, everything is still good to go. And yet these buildings are completely, utterly gone. actually amazing you know technology has come a long way it's like watching them futuristic animes but it's happening in our time right now yeah it's a scary thought I get it but at the same time just to sit back right now I'm like wow in this era right now this is when these robots started to amp up you know I wouldn't be surprised if they had the ability to fly what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's the rat. I hope you enjoyed tonight's rabbit hole. And if you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like. Subscribe, ring that notification bell, just to make sure the algorithm know what's up. So what are we gonna do, y'all? That's right, run these numbers up. Thanks again, until next time.